day six of the month of Tag Back, the show where we take a look at a blaster from the past, see what it could offer us today in the present, and this time! Take a look at a blaster that I've wanted to take a look at on this show for a very long time, one that has eluded me for years. However, recently, I've come across uh, a couple of them in, in, in varying conditions. This is even all of them. I'm pretty sure there's one more. Let's talk about the Nitro Quad. What is it about the Nitro Quad that just makes it one of the coolest blasters Nerf has ever made? Well, it's essentially like a Nerf knuckle duster kind of looking thing. It's uh, well, to be fair, the whole reason why I wanted one of these so much is because it reminds me of the best weapon from one of the best video games ever made. That's right, I can only be talking about Kid Icarus Uprising for the Nintendo 3DS, and the best weapon would be the Artillery Claws. This is where I would insert game footage, but I obviously don't have that, so you're just gonna have to use your imagination. But man, I loved them Artillery Claws, and I had a good pair that I used to destroy people with in the online multiplayer. And also, why is there not a sequel to Kid Icarus Uprising? What the heck, Nintendo? This is why I hate you as a company. And the Nitro Quad is kind of like that, except for not anywhere near it, but I wanna make one like it, darn it. I really want the Nitro Quad to be good, but it's a blaster from like 1998 and it ain't good. So you might be looking at this thing and figuring like, how the heck does it even work? And that's a great question because it's a Nitro Quad and it's an old weird blaster that Nerf has never made anything else similar to ever again. It fires the old school Mega Dart, of which uh, I have a couple and they're at a very real premium and I need to find a way to get actual more Mega Darts, but it holds four of them. A four dart capacity in whatever the heck you want to call this shape. And it fires, well, Kinda however you want it to, to be perfectly honest. It works pretty much how you would expect. This is your trigger, this is your priming handle, it is in fact a springer, and this on the side is a dial that has little numbers and things written on it that will kinda tell you like how you want this thing to fire. Do you wanna fire one shot? Do you wanna fire two shots? Do you wanna fire two shots from specific barrels? It will do all of that which is kind of weird. For instance, I have this on A, which is one. I open that up and then I pull this trigger and it will fire what I assume to be this barrel. That's exactly what it was. You will notice the performance is absolute garbage. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not really bothering to do chronographing or anything like that, because who knows how good this blaster would work unless I were to have a brand new one back in space here in 1998. But the next set after that is C and D, which is two and we go. It fires only one of them. But then we can do AB, which is apparently barrel three, and then D, which is four. And then it has a shot for one and two, and then three and four. So it could actually do two shots, obviously at diminished range, because there's not a whole lot of plunger volume here. Now I have a few of these, because my first time actually getting a hold of this blaster was somebody gave me the internals of a blaster I had been searching for for quite some time. They had no idea what it was. They gave me the internals because the actual shell is this knuckle duster kind of thing with the rest of this wall come apart, which is uh, fair enough, I suppose. Here's another one. Uh, only problem with this one is the hose is busted, but otherwise it works the same and I can replace that hose and it's honestly on the list of things I may modify. This one works flawlessly, except for it's missing one of the little connector pieces right there, which arguably makes it way more comfortable, but also way less steady. But that's kind of what you get with a blaster designed for small kids. Even though the grip itself is rather large, the space between the actual blaster and the grip is not large, and it will be very hard for many people to hold this blaster. But of course, the coolest thing to do, which I don't remember the last time anybody has ever done this, I'm definitely the first person this week to do so, dual wielding nitro quads because you can totally dual wield nitro quads. This is all I want in life. It's funny, like now that I'm sitting here looking at it, all the actual blaster like designation barrels and stuff are 
on the thing that you can't see because it's inside the shell. Overall, it's another unique Nerf Blaster from the past that I kind of wish that Hasbro would do more with. I mean, it's cool. It is super cool. And I would love a new iteration of the Nitro Quad. I mean, it looks cool. It feels good. It's one of the best design blasters I've seen Hasbro ever come out with. And I love the Nitro Quad. Nowadays, uh, well, first problem is it shoots Mega, the original Mega, which is hard to come by. And honestly, you saw the velocity, not very good. It actually uses, as you can see, one of those post designs where the air comes out of the post. This, this is not great. So you definitely want to rebarrel that and have, I mean, that's a good amount of spring tension and hopefully a decent amount of plunger volume. But of course it's going through here and then it's going out here and it has to deal with this mechanism. And that probably leads to a bunch of complications when it comes to actual performance. Would have been a heck of a lot cool if this was like an air tank with a pump. That would, that would make a lot more sense. And that's kind of what I thought the nitro quad was going to be when I first laid eyes on it. And it is meant to be left or right-handed. You just kind of pull that off and flip that thing around. And that's why it says A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, and four is because one through four is on one side and then A through D is on the other, which I just found out by actually looking at the blaster during this video. Could you mod these things? Totally. However, they are rather rare. They shouldn't be. It was a $10 blaster when it originally came out, but it doesn't say Nitro Quad anywhere on the blaster, which means it's really hard to find this thing when you're searching for it. A lot of people out there probably don't even know that this blaster is called the Nitro Quad unless they saw the packaging for it. So it's a completely useless blaster that looks cool that I have a special attachment to because I like weapons like this. It's kind of my thing. That is practically pointless, which uh, I still want to modify one, but judging on how rare they are, I don't know if I ever should, even though I have this set right here, which obviously needs to be fixed. And then I have another set that's just missing this piece right here. So maybe I'll modify them because I would really like to have two nitro quads. I mean, they're basically claw mounted knuckle duster things that fire darts. I could also do two shot shotguns. I love them. I love them very much. And I bet you do too. And I'm sorry that it's such a hard blaster to get a hold of. And Hasbro, I wish you'd make more of them. And really, when else am I going to talk about a blaster like this? Thank you very much for watching this episode of Tag Back. We've got 19 more coming your way. Maybe more. I mean, maybe I'll go through the entire month. Who knows? But of course, hit like, get subscribed, leave a comment, ring the bell, do all the algorithmic stuff to help the channel grow so you can help the hobby grow. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different video. You got